Welcome to the Other Half Podcast. My name is Gabe Gonzalez. I'm Josiah Gonzalez. This is the podcast where we explore mixed race culture and identity and all the perspectives that kind of come with that. And today's guest, we have a another fellow half Filipino. Um, I connected with him through TikTok after watching all of his awesome videos that have to do with the uh, Filipino experience. So um, hilarious. They're so good. Yeah. Uh, so please welcome to the podcast, Kuya Chris Freeman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem, man. It's we love the videos. Um, we'll definitely get into that and just talk about your whole um, creative process. Mm -hmm. And but the first question we love to ask is, what is your specific ethnic background? So I am okay. It's odd for me, I think, because I'm a second gen Filipino in the U.S. So my mom or my, my grandma is born in. Um, Manila. So she's born in Manila. My grandpa's born in Auckland. So he's Bisaya. My mom's, um, or my grandma is Tagalog. And so my mom was born in the US. Okay. And uh, so, and then my dad is white. So really, my mom grew up really whitewashed. And then, you know, my dad is white. So <laughs> I was raised very, very American. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, that was kind of like our dad. So our dad's Filipino. Um, okay. and our, and our mom is white and we, we turned out really white as you can tell. <laughs> um, but he was like, he became pretty much whitewashed as well. Would you say so? Si? Mm. Yeah, well he had to cause we, we live, we, uh, we grew up in like Northern Canada. So like oil and gas industry. So he like had to kind of like fit in with the rednecks. <laughs> so I think like he has, he had no accent, right? He sounded white. So he had a really good white voice and I think it, uh, it helped him out in his industry, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, coming from like a, a dual world, right? Where you've got a, you've got your own culture, your own background behind you, but you've also got to fit into society. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And cause he came over like 28, he was around tw uh, maybe like 26, 27 is when he came to mm -hmm. Canada. So he was born in the Philippines, grew up in the Philippines, but just immediately got rid of his accent like it was crazy <laughs> yeah how that happened yeah <laughs> um it's it's funny that you bring up accents because that's something that you know okay if you if you don't know my dad is white but his sister married a filipino oh, so really? even on my white side i've got filipino on my filipino side filipino <laughs> white side i've got filipino and yeah. the accent was the only thing that i think growing up until like 15 16 where i just i got the accent down <laughs> oh yeah nice yeah and that's definitely something you notice from your videos um <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> that so good that fob, that fob accent is so good <laughs> i love it um and so that's something that we are just like watching your videos on tiktok we're trying to lean more into our filipino side right now um mm -hmm. Like we grew up eating Filipino food and kind of understanding the language, but our, since our dad never spoke it, we just never learned it at all. Yeah. So we're spending the next two years of hyper-focusing learning Tagalog. That's our plan. Out of curiosity, how, do you, how are you guys doing that? Well, so <laughs> we're doing like two videos a week, um, just connecting with one another and quizzing one another. Um, but right now we're just focusing on vocabulary and we're going to step it up a notch and get into more phrases. Um, but yeah. Do you have for, any tips? For, yeah. For me, how I learned, cause I learned at the age of 21, I oh. did not grow up speaking it whatsoever. And I used Rosetta stone and there are some drawbacks to using Rosetta stone. One, you got to pay for it. Yeah. Two, it's um, super old school, deep Tagalog. Like some phrases in there, no one uses anymore. And like, oh, yeah. ko makilala ka. no one says like it, that's like a super formal way to say, it's nice to meet you. Good, sir. Yeah. <laughs> like No one says that. Yeah. Yeah. And so there, there's drawbacks to it. But in my opinion, if you learn the formal way and then you put slang on top of that, that in my opinion, helps a lot with people. Right. Cause it's like a foundation that you can build from. Yeah. Um, even like though. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead even though if you like converse with, cause we have some Filipino friends. So if we were like con to have a conversation with them and we just use all our formal 
<laughs> yeah. Just be like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> yeah. After that, in my opinion, like just use like TFC, GMA. You've got a bunch of YouTubers and TikTokers out there who just like 100% in Tagalog. And it's crazy to me that that works. Just strictly just watching that stuff, you pick up some slang, some vocabulary that you thought you would have never learned before. Right. And how long did it take you? It took about a year and a half, I think, before I got like really good conversational. Um, I haven't really practiced in a couple of years because I live by myself and no one here to really like practice with, which is kind of why I started like my, the Kuya Chris F TikTok account, which just because this is the only Filipino stuff that I know. And let me, let me just push out content like that. And it caught on for some reason, you know, <laughs> but it was just, it was a way for me to practice more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we're doing with uh, like this podcast, but also we do the videos. We call it our two-year Tagalog challenge. Um, so we're just, get, we're just getting into it. And this is episode eight of our podcast. Um, but we're just, it's all about connecting with other half people. And it's not just Filipino, but the Filipino community is really close and yeah, accepting. We're kind, of, we're kind of biased. So we get, we get all these Filipinos now coming on, but <laughs> yeah, Any, anyone's, anyone's cool. <laughs> yeah. Like Filipinos, we got our Filipino radar on like, oh, you're Filipino? Okay, let's let's chat it up. Let's eat food. Oh my God, you're Filipino too? <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah, and it's, um, and from our experience, because it's a little different because we don't really look Filipino, you know? Um, yeah, like at like, all. Look at me. Yeah, like size. <laughs> yeah, that's just some white white hippie dude or something. It's, it's the no, beard. It's, it's the, definitely the no. beard. Yeah, because I got like a tiny chin. So, it, you know, <laughs> the, the beard kind of covers it. Um, but I just did a video where I was compared, like I was talking about Dave Batista, Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy. He's, he's half Filipino where his dad's Filipino like us. Um, so, I, like, I kind of look like him, like very similar when I do the video. <laughs> it's hilarious. I could see it. I, I could definitely see it now that you point that out. And then he even commented on like my Instagram. He's like, he's like, Pinoy Pride. It's like, hey, thanks, Dave. <laughs> it's awesome. You got an Avenger reaching out to you. That that is amazing right there. <laughs> right? Like it, it took me by surprise for sure because like our Instagram account now is 75 people. Like yeah. this is this is just brand new. Um so when he commented, I was like, holy. I guess this does kind of work. Um, so, yeah. It's, I mean, right. we all got to start from, from zero. Like, I started from zero on October 30th last year, Damn. and it just blew up over the course of, what, eight, nine months now, ten months? And it, we all start from zero, and that's, that's the great part of social media is you get to see – you get to literally look back through someone's post and go – Oh, you started right here and now you're here. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. It's cool. It's cool to see how like popular like you're getting. Like your stuff is, is so funny though. So I imagine like it 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 makes sense that you're you're getting this big now. So it's it's pretty cool. On on a side note, yeah. it's crazy because I got a ton of pushback. This face does not scream Pinoy. Like what so like you guys must understand this too. Yeah, no, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, I put out all this content. You're just making fun of us Filipinos. And it took some time. Like I had to show off the tattoo a lot. <laughs> yeah, That's so good, man. I was thinking of doing a video of like Filipinos showing their tattoo, especially the sun, because cause I, I got the same thing. Right? Like, hey, oh, with the Canadian. Is that yeah, the... So, so the Canadian up top and then the Filipino at oh, the bottom. Okay. It's, like, it's like we have to ink ourselves to prove it. Yeah, prove it to you guys. Yeah, it's so funny. It's it's kind of like uh, how Filipinos always put stickers on the back of their cars, like the sun and the. Moon. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I was like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about getting some stickers on the back so that I can identify myself clearly. Like, um, no joke. There's a car that's parked right outside my apartment yeah. with the stickers on. I'm like, where are you at? <laughs> like, which apartment are you? Oh, you have to go. <laughs> Shit. That's so good. 
Um, so speaking of your hustle on TikTok, um, how, so I saw that you have a thousand videos. Is that right? Like around there? Yes. Yes. So how, what's the process? I'm just curious. Real process is my handy dandy notebook. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a specific set of formulas that in my opinion work really well. Some that I've crossed off the list, like don't work. Um, some of them just go from like ways to get the person, like the viewer to watch all the way through to the end, just to get watch time up all the way. Um, that method has seemed to work. And then of course, like what subjects can I talk about? Because some people have gotten offended by some of the subjects and it's just like cross that off the list. Um, but after that, it's just have fun. Like it's TikTok, like have fun. Yeah. It's, it's such an interesting social media and it's definitely like, it's taking over. It's exponentially growing. Um, businesses are getting on there like really quick and they understand now that the viewership is like that younger generation is, will be the next people that are going to be buying the products. So like they are getting on it fast. And mm -hmm. um, I've really tried to focus on providing value. Like that's the number one thing. Um, and I don't want it to be, you know, just very superficial um, mm. with our content. So we're just looking to, to provide as much value as possible. And like, I know you go the comedic route, the entertaining route, right? Value comes in so many different ways, shapes and forms, because some people like for me, yes, I take the, the comedic approach, but if you really look at what value I give, a lot of the Filipinos who moved to Canada, to the America, to wherever, um, they feel like they're left out. And they've reached out to me saying, your content makes me feel less alone. And that's the value that I found mm -hmm. that I didn't even know was out there, you know? Right. Yeah, no doubt. It's a good point, yeah. It's and then that's what it's all about, right? That social media of like connecting people and, and creating that community of, of like strangers, but you know, like, oh, I, I can relate to that and I can, I can understand that person. And yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's, it's all about community. It really plays on the biochemistry of humans needing to connect with others. Mm -hmm. And TikTok just takes it to another level. It's like, you can have fun. You can just have fun, be goofy, fool around. And there's no, there just seems to be no repercussions right now. So, right. People are Slight, just... sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> one of, one of my friends um, who I actually met through TikTok, she posted a video and it got negative. Like she has 200 K followers and she posted one video and it started trending in the Philippines for all the wrong reasons. And oh. people started hating on her, hating on her, hating on her. And she, she took like, two three weeks off tiktok and now she's back posting more content but you know what like it does have some negative impact but you're right for the overall generalization yes it has a ton of fun on there yeah and we were we were just, just hypothesizing like what's the next thing gonna be like no one saw this coming right like no. if if the gary state v. gary v did <laughs> right that's true <laughs> yeah he he is good at that yeah. Um, yeah, it's like maybe maybe some kind of like virtual reality, I think, is my guess, where you're just like more, you're a part of the community even more. And that's, that's just my guess. You've got to find a way to, to swipe through to new scenarios, new recreations of whatever your environment is, especially in VR, because if you notice TikTok, the attention span is just like that, just going, going, going. You can swipe in, you know, two and a half seconds and you're on the next video. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking about VR, it's the same principle. You've got to find a way to swipe through all your different realities. Right. It's almost like, say you have some glasses. I'm just spitballing here. I have no idea. <laughs> um, like I'm not even in the tech industry. I'm just, you know, just having fun. Maybe like on your glasses, you just like press a button. Just like, boop, next one. Boop, next one. Or blink. Or yeah. <laughs> I don't like this video. <laughs> Stuff like that. Who knows? Um, 
I have a question. What is the, uh, what's the piece of content that you had the biggest pushback on? Okay. If I brought up Manny Pacquiao. So (laughs) I was like, here are the top five Filipino actors. And I'm like, all right, James Reed, um, like all the, the big name actors in the Philippines. And then I got to number one is Manny Pacquiao. And I got a ton of pushback <laughs> because here's the thing. If you, if you don't know, you don't know. Manny Pacquiao is, yes, a boxer. He's a politician. He is an actor. He has his own basketball league in the Philippines. He has like 14 different businesses all throughout like the province side. And he does a lot of stuff. Like, let's be real. He's a great yeah. person. And I got a lot of pushback where people were like, how dare you make fun of my my senator? I'm like, y'all know that I'm not lying. <laughs> yeah. And I started just listing movies that he was in. And they're like, well, I still don't believe you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, man. Yeah, people get real sensitive about uh, he's because he's the hero, right? He's the the yes. hero of the Philippines. People get real sensitive about him. Yeah, especially, I mean, he is like especially that province that took offense to it. They're like, he is our senator. Yeah, he is our representative. He's our voice. And mm-hmm. you don't you don't make fun of someone who is that, even if it's true. Like if you think that someone's making fun of it, yeah, it it goes downhill from there. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> so have you been to the Philippines? No. <laughs> oh, wow. that is actually, that's a question I get asked a lot. So, um, what part of the Philippines are you from? Or, you know, what part, uh, like when have you last visited? Never. I was trying to go this year, 2020. Right. Obviously those plans got canceled. Yeah. And, you know, I was going to go with my Lolo to, um, you know, back to visit his old province and all of that stuff, but stuff went down. But I think growing up, my mom and dad were just always hustling, always working and just never found the time to. And well, now it's like giving me the drive to try one day, maybe after 2020 to go visit. Yeah, that's, that that was the same with us. Like we just never could get there, never could afford to go there as a family when we were younger. Cause there's three of us, three siblings. Yeah. Um, and the first time I've only been once and I was 30 when I got there. So, mm. so it took me a while to get there. So, a little yeah. later in life. Right. But I'm sure you, you had just as much fun there. Right. Oh yeah. Could have spent a lot longer. We only spent 10 days. Um, so I regret that part, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I still have yet to go too. So I'm in the same boat as you, man. <laughs> there we go. So I'm still At waiting. I'm not alone. Yeah, yeah. I got you. So. <laughs> Before this, um, I was trying to think of something to cook and I just made adobo. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is fitting for the podcast. Um, what are your top five favorite Filipino dishes? All right. Coming in at number five. Oh, this is okay. I'm sorry. I don't put adobo at the top for generic reasons because every single family has their own recipe Mm -hmm. province region like family everyone has their own recipe and my my mom's is the best because you know (laughs) memories and all you know it's like she hers is the best yeah um but i think number five for me is going to be the party favorite fun sit like you just can't go wrong with fun sit you guys are really putting me on the spot here five Number four would have to be, again, generic. You've got to get, like, lumpia Shanghai. Like, just lumpia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Number three. Wait, that was five, four, three. Oof. Um, Caldereta. Nice. Two is going to be, oh, I'm like, what is up there? Isao. Filipino street food, Isao, is, oh. Hey, if you haven't had street food, like that is the one to get in my opinion okay. and the number one that most people actually find really weirded like they get weirded out my number one favorite is then go on okay oh, yeah. nice <laughs> that's awesome there we go <laughs> nice yeah yeah i know that was on the spot we didn't we didn't give you that question <laughs> ahead of time so of course the the list might change um, yeah but what's what's the my, my number one won't change 
Okay. Number one won't change. Esau is um, intestine that you oh. put on a skewer. On the skewer, so, yeah. Yeah. It, chicken in, intestine, just put on, oh, the one that I like is chicken Esau. So chicken Esau or the chicken intestine you put on a skewer, put on a barbecue and just wait for the deliciousness. Yeah, I, I did have that there. Um, Cause I like, I love the Filipino barbecue, but I didn't know it was called that, the intestine one. It's so good. What's the texture? Um, you've got to try it. Like I will. The texture <laughs> of it, everything about it is just, I can't, it's, it's indescribable. Yeah. <laughs> it ta- it's the texture. Ah, it's like, if someone's like, here's intestine on a barbecue skewer, <laughs> and then you ate it, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that is intestine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you've never had it before, you'd just be like, oh, that's the texture of it. I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to describe. <clears throat> um, and also, like the lumpia, we didn't know any different about, like, it was called lumpia Shanghai. We just thought it, the small ones were lumpia growing up. Um, and then when I went like into bigger cities, they're like, this is Lumpia Shanghai. I was like, oh, I didn't realize. Like, I just thought Lumpia was the small ones. But Okay, I posted up a, pic- or a picture, a TikTok of my Lola's recipe of Lumpia Shanghai. And in my TikTok, I did not specify it was Shanghai. <laughs> and so many comments were, that's not the real Lumpia, that's Shanghai. <laughs> like... <laughs> Oh, yes man. yes thank you you know <laughs> yeah oh man savages out there i'm telling you <laughs> yeah it seems that people do really get defensive about our filipino culture yeah it's funny at some point at some point you gotta love like especially with the ones back home back in the philippines they do get defensive because this is this is their pride and joy this is what they grew up with mm-hmm. and if you don't respect it they will take offense to it. Um, sometimes they, they don't see that you are taking respect out of it and they take it out of context um, or they think you're just making fun of them. But at the same time, most overall, they're like, hey, you're appreciating us. Thank you. I was just thinking about like, because I've seen some of your videos talking about careers and you're like, I, I'm not going to be a nurse. And um, what, what career path did you choose? I did. I am a business major. Um, I actually majored in HR, but I went down the marketing route. So what I do on TikTok is give or take what I do for other companies. Um, I do their marketing, social media, um, web design, graphic design, all of that stuff. Um, I, I have a nice little dabble in all of that. And what were you pressured to do? Uh, again whitewashed parents they're like okay there we go do whatever you want do what like they realize that you can make money in whatever career or whatever Mm -hmm. path that you chose and it's just be the best in the career so you can make the most in that whatever facet that is yeah that's sweet i guess that's the benefit of being second gen hey (laughs) yeah it's a weird path it really i mean my mom has her own business my mom went into medical but didn't go being a nurse mm-hmm. she's um a medical billing or she owns a medical billing company and you know five no about 10 employees now at this point and then my dad's on like he's a consultant and so both of them just both being entrepreneurs they were like yeah you'll you'll make money just don't worry just focus on what your strengths are so, okay there we go yeah nice that's that is great advice. <laughs> Focus on your strengths. Double we, down. Um, because we got the like do whatever makes you happy kind of thing as well. Um, but we didn't really get too much life advice in terms of career paths. Mm. I would say, yeah, we kind of just like fell into the stuff that we're currently doing. I think, um, yeah, like our sister is a nurse, so. <laughs> <laughs> That ended up being her thing. Um, But she kind of diversifies. Like she teaches other nurses as well, like out of college. So Mm. it's kind of cool. But I think that that is always a hard, especially when it comes to like subject, like, hey, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? And you tell that to an eight year old or ask that to an eight year old. And you're like, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? They don't know. (laughs) No one knows. Yeah. You know, my dad is almost 
well, my dad's pretty young, but my dad's almost in his 50s. And he is like, I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. That's funny. Um, I'm a high school teacher. So that's kind of like one of my guiding things is constantly giving advice and just letting kids know like, hey, this is kind of the path you should take based on your skill set or et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's, I guess that's a part of my daily, my daily thing. That, that's a tough message to tell kids to, especially like one of my favorite books is Think and Grow Rich. And it really shows that, yeah, you hone down on your skills and you can, you can get rich based off of what you're good at, not what you know, other people tell you you're good at. Be a nurse, be a nurse, be a doctor, or lawyer, or engineer. No, you figure out what you're good at and then go from there. That's yeah. tough. That's tough advice. Um, I would say there's two things that determine um, making money in, in our world. And it's you have to be skilled at something, number one. And then the market, there has to be something in the market for that skill. Like it doesn't, you could be the best in the world at something like most Olympic athletes. But if there's no market for it, you're not making money, unfortunately. And the third thing I'm going to put this out there is luck. That's the luck of the draw. It kind of goes with number two there, but it is its own category. I mean, yeah, exactly. You could be the best candle maker in the world, but if no one knows what, why your candle's amazing, then no one's going to buy it. Yeah. yeah, true that. Or just like general interest. And in, because um, that's like a debate in the like WNBA versus NBA, right? Like, like they're the best women basketball players in the whole world. And they just get paid pennies compared to the NBA players. And that's because of the market and interest, unfortunately. But um, so here's a, here's a thing that we've kind of, kind of figured out, me and Sai, with this podcast is, and it answers like what you want to do with your whole life is like, if you want a billion dollars tomorrow, just a billion dollars, like what would you do with the rest of your life? It's crazy because I've asked that question before and I always follow it up with, why aren't you doing it now? And I'm assuming that's where you're going with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I've used that as motivation with people too. It's like, well, if, yeah, if you, if, if money was off the table, what would you do? And, you know, asking people that same question, it's like, I've had to ask myself that, what mm -hmm. would I want to do with my life? And the crazy thing is this, this, like, being on social media, um, while I was in college, while I was studying for my degree, um, I was studying how to speak the Galog, and I was also studying um, social media influencers. How did they make money? How did what? How did they do what they do? And I started, you know, watching Alpha M uh, on the men's fashion side because I got two TikTok. I've got a men's fashion TikTok and my Filipino one. Okay. And you know, I started studying all these men's fashion influencers, and then I got to meet them couple of times and what I would do is what they've done put out a ton of content have enough time in the day that you can and working from home because of COVID I, I don't have any travel time my car's parked and I haven't used it in about a week and so it's like if I had a billion dollars in my bank account right now I just stay home and push out a bunch of content that's it nice. see like it feels it's so liberating to know like when you have an answer to that question, it's like, it, it's just crazy. You can just go through your life now doing the things that you know you want to do and contributing to that. Um, I mean, and, do I wish it made more money for me right now? Of course, of freaking course. Because, you know, it's not enough. That's why I have a day job. It's not enough to supplement my, my day job. But until then, it's like, keep doing what I'm doing. It's fun. I'm loving it. Exactly. And yeah, that's what I was prefacing like that. That's what we want to do with this podcast. Like right now we're doing this in the evenings and weekends and connecting with people all over the world. Um, but if we're lucky enough and we work hard enough, I think generating revenue from this would be awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause this is what, this is one of the things I would do if I had a billion dollars for sure. Yeah. Like this, Just, this is what I would want to be doing. One of these. Yeah. So, and I think the core like the core of the, I guess you could say human spirit, um, 
and this, this plays to like your answer is that I think that we all want to create something. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if that's like too much of an overgeneralization, but it seems like a lot of people embrace the creative aspect and just want to just create something. And whether it's content, maybe it's, um, even if it's like sports, they just want to create their own way through the sport. Like I know that's taken a stretch, but there's like a creative aspect, I think. No, I mean, if you're talking like techniques, right, you're creating a technique for in baseball in soccer, whatever it is. Right. Um, if you're like, you're mass, you're becoming the avatar, you're mastering all elements of whatever you're doing and creating mm -hmm. your own self identity within that niche. Yeah. I also think it, it, yeah, it comes to the, or it speaks to the biological nature of like, um, like human urges, like, our one, our one goal directive in biology is to like procreate and like keep the species going. And I think because we have this really well-developed prefrontal cortex and we got all this technology, instead of just having kids all the time, now we have all these other avenues to create and leave legacy and, and kind of evolve the species in a way, right? So evolving by talking and taking other perspectives and creating these, this content, instead of just, just having kids, we can do way more now, I think. I never thought of it that way and I cannot yeah. stop. That is a great point. Yeah. I just thought of it. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love I mean yeah. that you are I think 100% right. It's like, yeah. yeah, what like Tony Stark in Iron Man, what is your legacy? Mm -hmm. And the legacy of us, yes, it used to be our kids. Thus the parental pressures onto the kids of yeah do this because I didn't get the chance to do this because I didn't get the chance to generation after generation. Now it's okay. Doors are open everywhere. Mm -hmm. What, what kind of legacy do you want to leave and where? Exactly. And now it's like, you can do it anywhere. <laughs> you can, yeah. you can leave that legacy wherever you want right now. And that's the cool things. We all have access to, to create whatever we want, which is cool. So long as uh, you can harness that, over stimulus yes. right it's, it's like spider-man first getting his senses or or even superman when he first came like getting his powers like you gotta know how to harness it otherwise yeah. it's just going to destroy your perspective of how to move through life <laughs> yeah I, I, that's kind of why you know avatar spider-man it's all the same thing it's like yeah mastery of yourself getting to know who are you at the core and if you don't know who that is, it's self-discovery. In my opinion, like that's the first thing you got to do. Read books, listen to podcasts, whatever it is. And then from there, you expand outward. Okay, now that I know who I am, what do I want to become? And then who do I want to influence? And how do I take care of my, my family and future and all that, like the rings after that? And that's like, that's a big thing that I try to do in education now, um, especially in my classroom is it's it's about identity and it's about how that how you learn like getting to know how you learn and a buzzword nowadays in education is metacognition which is thinking about your thinking so like why do i like that thing or why do i argue with that person etc cetera, etc cetera. um versus like the information that the information gathering because we have the internet so the teacher no longer holds all the information. So we have to, you know, navigate now. Glad you admit that. Cause I still see teachers <laughs> telling their students, I know everything when no, you, you don't trust me. <laughs> like, cause I, I'm in my third year of teaching and just stepping into the classroom and seeing some grade tens, like 15, 16 year olds that just know so much more about a topic than you do. Like, cause they, when they they're truly passionate about something, They'll just like hyper focus, study it online without being in school. And then you get into a classroom and you're like, well, obviously I don't know everything. And <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's a new world of education, I think. It really is. I mean, uh, learning curves are all over the place. Um, I mean, as you know, when we were kids growing up, we had a surplus of exercise and going outdoors and our information was pretty slow coming to us. And in, in my opinion, like nowadays, yeah. the physical aspect is slowing down, but the mental side of it has escalated where school actually seems kind of slow. 
it's challenging for sure. Um, but it has to, like, we have to adapt with how technology is adapting. Like it's, it's necessary to move forward. Um, and then teachers are, like we're becoming more facilitators of how the kids construct their own knowledge. Um, mm-hmm. And I've come to realize like just going through life is literally you're like, you're learning. We're always learning. Like you said about your dad, he's 50, like he's still learning. He's still trying to figure out certain problems to solve, et cetera. Um, and that's the best way I think to go about education. It's just like, it's about problems to solve. Life is always about problems to solve challenges, goals to meet. Let's just do it now and I'll help you through it. And then, you know. Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> it's, it's funny to me because yeah, I started up my dad on social media. He's at Professor Chuck on like literally everything, YouTube, um, SoundCloud. I've got some podcasts of him, like me and him going back and forth, um, talking business stuff. And yeah, it's, the editing process can be cumbersome. And at the same time, really fun. Like going back through, listening to the audio again, it's, it's fun. It is. And I'm lucky I'm on summer vacation right now, so I can spend hours just editing. Um, but once I get into my day job, and it's going to be a little different for us to like manage this podcast, I think. I'm going to have to start grinding, getting up at 5 or 6 a.m. kind of thing. Well, I think it'll be worth it. It's fun. Yeah, we get weekends off. We're fine. Yeah, we get weekends. So speaking of podcasts, what are your, do you listen to podcasts? I listen to a few, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, so Robert Kiyosaki, um, Gary Vee, I, I go through his stuff, his stuff's kind of repetitive at times, yeah. and then creating, you know, with my dad and me, um, create our, our own stuff. What about books? Oh, I mean, I've started, I, I love audiobooks, and I've started actually getting the hard print covers for a lot of stuff that I just particularly love um so same thing you know robert t kiyosaki um the richest man in babylon um just either stuff about technology nowadays and then stuff about um riches and understanding finance because my my girlfriend's a finance financier she um, works in finance and so finance to us is just our nightly like lovey-dovey discussions (laughs) nice like I think the biggest influence on me jumping on TikTok was um what was the name of the book is oh gosh I'm like I want to get it because I honestly don't remember the name of it give me one second the Lexus on the Olive Tree is in my opinion the best book if to understand technology like where it's come from since the 50s 60s until now in the age of the internet if you really want to understand that like this is the best book to read and kind of nice. predict going forward. Cool. The Lexus and the Olive Tree. I got to read that because I'm going to do a, a, a technology or social media unit in my English class. So that might be a good read. It's a big book. It's fun. Uh, it's full of like old, either older terminology or just stuff that kids might not relate with. Typewriters all the way to, you know, DOS. Um, but in, from what I've read in it, it's like, okay, it goes from the start of the internet and how information started to trickle like one web, you know, one strand here and there. And then all the way to when it was amazon.com where they were selling books, that's kind of where the author was writing the book um, at the time. And he's like, and, and then he gives some predictions of where it's gonna go after that. And I seen some of his predictions come true. Crazy. Yeah, I wanna okay. check that out. Yeah, Sounds that's like- a, gotta put that on the reading list. Yeah. Okay, Lexus, so, the, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Lexus, I'm like, I can talk about this book for, for hours. I'm like, <laughs> I shouldn't be. <laughs> no, it's all good. The Lexus and the Olive Tree. Who's the author? Uh, the author is Thomas L. Friedman or Friedman. Friedman. Okay. Yeah. Remember that. Okay. Sweet. So do you have any advice for people that want to create content on TikTok? So people coming up or people that are like, especially since you're, I mean, that is your field, social media, marketing, et cetera. So what advice do you have? The comment section. Don't get too butthurt about the comment section. Um, 
I, I'm still in that boat. I, I still get my own insecurities start showing because of the comment section. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't grow up like being full Filipino. And so to hear someone bash on something about me, it's like, no, you're bashing on me. Um, don't get too buttered, you know, over the comment section. Um, I think one big takeaway too from social media is this is your livelihood that you're putting out there for people to see, which means you're opening yourself up to the public. Anything and everything is up for public debate now. Um, you know, if you're talking to your friends and family, if you've got that somehow connected on social media to your platform and referencing them in some fashion, they can go find them. The public can go find your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, wh whoever it is. And just like a superhero puts on a mask, to protect their secret identity that's kind of it's like you start understanding why they do what they do and just being in the public eye it's scary it really is um you get all i get a lot of children you know that comment fun funny stuff to okay dude really come on and then you get the adults who put in more time and effort to criticize you and going off of number one comment section to number two your life is on the line, or your your yourself, your livelihood is out there in the public view. It you don't know what's going to come up. Right. Awesome. That's solid. Um, I think I'm not an expert at this by any means, but I think a good safety blanket um, for people on social media is, and this is why comedy is actually really funny for the most part, is there's an element of truth. Right. So especially with the stuff that you do and stereotypes, et cetera, there's an element of truth. But I think the more informative you can be and the more element of truth that you have underneath what you're trying to give to the public is kind of like a safety blanket. Like it's it's not really it's hard to be criticized when you're trying to be more objective, I think, versus subjective and random opinionated stuff, right? Um but I think that could be a safety blanket. What do you think about that? They Okay, because you're putting everything and anything out on social media, whatever's in the camera's point of view is going to be up for public debate. So yes, the subject of the video might be X, but now you're criticized for what you're wearing or your eye twitching or your big forehead, like whatever it is. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's kind of where it's like, don't read the comments or <laughs> skip those. And yeah, like, yes, when people start seeing the truth of the video, like the message, what's the core value of it? They'll hop on, like the good commenters will be like, why are you being so mean? Right. But at the same time, then you get the opposite comments where it's like, it has nothing to do with the video and they just want to bash you for being you. Okay. So it's almost like we have to have a certain level of self-esteem before you can kind of put yourself into the world a little more because if your self-confidence and esteem is down here yeah. you're just going to get torn apart on social media i think especially if you attach your identity to your as like your online presence because a lot of people like will do that because that's the way they want to connect right is they are now their online presence rather than their online presence a reflection of them so they just attach themselves to it and so if something attacks their online presence then it's like ooh, that's me and i think I think a lot of people should be aware it's not not really you like you're more than that right you have a it's just a reflection of some of your views so yeah in a TikTok, 15 a minute like that doesn't describe yeah. the entirety of a person exactly. and yes some people take offense like you commented that on my video no dude it's a video that's 60 seconds probably <laughs> yeah it's not you yeah exactly so i think this is a good place to wrap up um we've gone through a lot of awesome stuff and I think we, like you provided a lot of value to anyone that's going to watch this, I think. So it was really good. Yeah. Um, Appreciate that. So the way that we like to finish our episodes now, um, this is only the second ep episode of us doing this, is to ask our guests, what are three things that you have learned, like three life lessons or advice or wisdom or anything from family members? So from family members, I think the first one is kind of what my Lola told me. So my Lola passed away when I was a lot younger and 
she was going through cancer and all that stuff and her hair started falling off. And I do remember, subtly remember, looks fade. She called herself beautiful being bald and looks fade. So if she could call herself beautiful and going through all of that stuff, then you know what? Looks fade and you are still the person that you are inside. And to me that, yeah, the beard is probably going to be patchy, <laughs> whatever, you know, I mean, okay, your, your beard is magnificent. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the beard might get patchy or, you know, bald or you spots lose hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like whatever it is, comfortable with whatever you are and you can rock it. Oh, yeah. looks fade, but you are still beautiful. Yeah, I like that. Solid. Um, the second one is, so my last name is Freeman. And being a free man, one of those life lessons that my dad personally taught me every day of my life was nothing is free. You, we're not free men, we're reasonably priced men. And <laughs> because of that, it's like you get this idea that, you know, it's like, oh, um, free, you know, oh, buy one, get one free, right? You go to a store, buy one, get one free. And my dad would look at me like, is it really free? No, you're just paying half. You're just paying half the price now. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so right. You're pay someone's paying for it. And he's like, yeah, if it's not free to you, then someone else is paying for it or if it's not free to you monetarily with money you're paying with it for your time so you got to work your butt off no matter what because nothing is handed to you nothing is free sweet nice and oh yeah this one's for my mom um the last one is what happens today won't be what happens tomorrow you get knocked down today you get beat down you get brutalized today and batman begins bruce why do we fall to learn to pick ourselves back up and if you can learn to pick yourself back up just the sheer thought of learning learning to pick yourself back up you're not even like you're still crumb like you're still on the ground limping whatever it is but you're learning every so often just to pick yourself a little bit back up little by little yeah it, it goes a long way and as soon as you learn to pick yourself back up that same hurdle comes your way knocks you back down you pick yourself back up faster that's perfect yeah see this is these are good things to end an episode with <laughs> yeah it gives you some perspective definitely yeah all right thanks a lot chris for coming on yeah. thank you Gary. Um, thank you so much sir yeah it was an awesome hour um where can people find you on social media at at queer chris f k-u-i-c-h-r-i-s f on uh, what they call TikTok, Instagram, and then Kuya Chris F official on YouTube. Sweet. Awesome. Thanks, Anyways. Chris. Night, guys. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the podcast. Uh, we enjoyed this one quite a bit. Kuya Chris is a hilarious guy. He also provided a lot of great insight today. So that was really awesome. Yeah, as much as possible, we want to give as much value as we can, mm -hmm. uh, depending on whatever the topics may be. Um, but this is awesome that he works in social media and is doing some awesome things on TikTok. So if you want to in improve your TikTok game, he gives some good advice. Yeah. For, yeah. yeah so if you want to uh, check out Clea Chris, we'll have all the links and stuff to his social media in the description below. I will also link uh, some of the suggestions of books and stuff that he recommended as well. And we'll we can throw some links up for that as well. Definitely. Thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment on anything you'd like. We're just learning. This is episode eight for us. Um, we got a long ways to go, but it's been a lot of fun so far. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for uh, coming through. See you on the next one.